All right, artists. Today we are going to continue our study of apples and drawing apples. We are going to use the style of pointillism. We saw a little video about Seurat. We talked about how he used just dots to create his pictures. He uses the primary colors, just the primaries and some white. And he allows the eye to create the other colors. He uses the eye to mix the colors. So on the another side of our folded paper, I just like to flip it over this way, we're going to do our pointillism apple. And we are going to try to blend our colors with our eye. So we're not going to do any color mixing. We're going to, if we want green, we're going to put yellow dots next to blue dots to create the green. And as you stand away from your painting, the green color will show. It's an illusion of the eye. So we can start, if you would like, you can start by using a pencil and you can, again, draw the contour line for your apple. You want to fill the page. I'm sorry, my apple's over there and I'm, I'm looking at it as I draw it. You want to fill the page with your apple, make sure that it is an interesting composition. Again, remember the stem is a shape and we're going to put in all those mapping techniques we learned last time. So here's my highlight shape. I see another highlight over here. The apple and the highlights in the shadows go the same direction as the curve of the apple. If my highlights are on this side, that means the sun or the light is coming from this corner. So my cast shadow will be over here like this. This side of my apple will be my darkest value and then my medium value here and in the dip and the lighter value over here. And then I'm gonna do a line here for a table. Okay, now I'm ready to paint. So I am seeing my apple is kind of a yellowy orange color right up here. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna use a Q-tip and you only need one Q-tip. You just dip it in the paint like this and I'm gonna start by putting some yellow dots over here because this is where I see some yellow on my apple and I don't want my dots really thick. So if I, like there I could see I had too much paint I'm just gonna dot my Q-tip there and pick up some of that paint. You do not need to refill your Q-tip very often. I may haven't even dipped mine again in the paint and I've made all those dots. I also see some yellow over here along that dip or the edge of my apple here and some yellow over here. So wherever I see yellow or orange, because I have no orange, but red and yellow make orange, so I have to put my yellow where I see orange and where I see green and where I see just yellow. I'm gonna dip again because I see a little green right in here, so I want to blend that with my blue. And I see a little bit more yellow down here that actually looks a light orange color. All right, so that's everywhere that I see my yellow. Now I'm going to use the magenta to create my orange colors and my reds. So I see some light red, right, light orange rather, right down here. So I'm gonna start putting in some of my magenta. And again, I don't want too much paint on those dots. And we're not blending. So see how I'm not blending the paint like I would with a paintbrush? I'm just dotting that color. Now this is definitely going to take a little bit longer than when we colored with the oil pastels because I have to move a little slower and take my time to really see those colors and blend them in. So now as I start to add my magenta here, as we look at it, it looks orange because the magenta is blending in with my yellow. If you get too much paint on your q-tip you can dab it 
on the egg crate, or you can get a piece of free draw paper and use that as scratch paper for dabbing. Okay, so I have filled in a lot of my apple with red and yellow spots. And I see that some of my area, this is starting to turn some orange here and orange here, but I, I need a little bit more orange colors up here. So I'm gonna come back with some yellow. But I have magenta on here, so what I wanna do is just clean off as much of that magenta as I can. And you can use your finger, or you can use a rag, or you can use another piece of paper from the supply area, or you can just wipe it on the crate. But I'm gonna get most of the paint off, so most of it's off. And then I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more yellow, because I see up here in some areas, I need a little bit more yellow in here next to my magenta to make it a little bit more of a orange color. So you can go back and use another color after you've used it if you clean your Q-tip off. And like here, my magenta was still pretty wet, so it see how it picked up on my Q-tip? That's okay, I'm just gonna go with it. It's making kind of a reddish orange color, which is fine. And I'm gonna fill that in. All right, now you wanna make sure that you've got different values. So I can see I've got lighter values here, some medium value. Now I wanna come in and do a little bit more magenta through here to fill in my white areas. And I think this is a really good start making my apple start to look three-dimensional. Now I'm gonna come in with some blue. So again, I'm just gonna kinda of wipe my my Q-tip off, and I just rub the paint on my hands. We can wash our hands later. Dip it in the blue. I don't want too much blue. Blue's really powerful. So I'm gonna dab it off there. And now down here, on the darker part, where if this is the light, the apple is curving away from the light, it's going to be darker. So I'm going to put some blue in here. And the blue mixing with the yellow and the magenta will make a greenish brown color. So see how that is starting to build in the dimension and it's starting to look a little bit more dimensional. I have a lot of blue on here, so I'm actually gonna put that in my shadow. And then once I've dabbed it, I'm gonna come back into the apple and put a little bit more into the apple. Now up here in the dip, I needed some green. So now that there's not very much blue on here, I'm going to come back in here and put some of that lighter blue and then make my stem blue also. So now I can see there's a little bit of a differential of that light yellow. And then when it gets down into the dip there, it turns darker. I'm going to put a little bit more magenta in here to really darken that that edge so it looks more three-dimensional right there. Again, I'm going very slow, artists, and working pretty slow and steady with this. Now, I want my shadow to be purple, so I laid in blue, and I'm going to add some magenta to that. But if your Q-tip gets really dirty and it's just making brown or mud, I do have new Q-tips, but look, you also have two sides, so you can flip it over. I actually think I'm gonna save this for my white. This is still, this end, even though it looks brown, I've wiped most of the color off so it can keep working. And I want some magenta here with my blue to make what color? I hope you all said purple and my shadow is going to be a purple color. Now this painting may take us more than one class session to complete. I would rather you take your time, artists, and we use two class sessions, then you rush to finish during this class session. So now that should look pretty purple, which it does. I am really liking my apple. Because of the detail here, I don't think I'm gonna do the background. I think I'm gonna leave my background white. I am going to now use the tip of my Q-tip that is clean and put my white spots up here for my highlights. Here are my highlights. 
and I might even add another highlight over here and maybe over there just to kind of soften some of my my colors and then I think let's see I have purple I have some greens yellows oranges I think I'm going to do my table line back here purple so I'm going to do some blue dots and then some magenta dots and hopefully this will look purple so I'm laying the dots next to the dots not on top but next to and I am happy with my apple. All right, go slow artists, take your time and have fun.